this is lesson 21 sequences our warm up here so you guys uh, hit pause and then try and do this rewrite in function form then create an uh, input output table to graph the function so rewriting in function form means to do what to solve for y so we want this eventually to say y equals down here so what do I need to do to solve for y? Well I can see there's a 2 right next to it or a negative 2 right next to it, that's multiplication and we're subtracting 6x from the y this could also be written as negative 2y minus 6x equals negative 16 you can see a lot easier how you're subtracting 6x here uh, either way we do the same thing we're going to add 6x to undo it so we get negative 2y equals 6x minus 16 we can't combine those and then we're going to divide everything by negative 2 so this is y equals a negative and a positive make a negative so that's negative 3x and two negatives make a positive so that makes 8 so there's our function rewritten in function form and now we want to substitute in some in, some uh, some numbers for our inputs. What are our inputs? Our inputs are x values and our outputs, that's what we'll get out, that's what it equals, that's going to be the y. So this equals negative 3 if we substitute in a negative 2 first. So we're going to plug in a negative 2 for x. Negative 3 and negative 2 make positive 6. 6 plus 8 makes... 14. So at negative 2, we're at 14. Um, I'll do it the other one over here. So this is y equals negative 3x plus 8. Now we're going to substitute in a negative 1. So negative 3 times negative 1 plus 8. And negative 3 and negative 1 make 3. Plus 8 makes 11 so that's the point negative 1 11 negative 1 11 is like right here negative 2 14 I forgot to plot that so that's gonna be you know somewhere up here negative 2 14 this is negative 1 11 uh, our next one when we substitute in a zero so negative 3 times 0 plus 8 and so that's 0 plus 8 which makes 8 and we should start to see a pattern now what is that pattern well we can see and this will work when we're dealing with linear equations equations to the first power where our highest exponent is a 1 where we can see that we're going from 14 to 11 that's going down 3 from 11 to 8 that's going down 3 so our next one should be down 3 we can test that it should be a 5 we can test it when we plug in a 1 right? so negative 3 times 1 plus 8 negative 3 times 1 makes negative 3 plus 8 makes 5 so that's 1 5 and so we can do the next one would be 2 2 without even having to do any work as we're going down 3 each time uh, so there's our graph of that function right there for those inputs Uh, homework questions will skip. So today is uh, introduction to sequences. So what is a sequence? A sequence is a list of things, usually numbers that are in order. So here's an example of a sequence. The numbers 3, 5, 7, 9. We put these little dots here, dot dot dot, means that it's going to go on forever. Our word for that is infinite if it goes on forever. These numbers can be called terms, that's usually what I call them. So it's the first term, second term, third term, 
uh, fourth term, and so on. Um, they're also called elements. I don't use that very often, or member. I don't use that uh, very often either, but they all are interchangeable with each other. They mean the same thing. So here's our general our general uh, equation for a uh, for a sequence. Okay, and we read this as a of n equals a sub one plus the quantity n minus one times d, where a sub one here or here it's the same thing down here means your first term. Okay, so that would be so in this case, a sub one would be three because that's our first term plus, then D stands for our common difference. So a common difference in this example from 3 to get to 5, from 5 to get to 7, from 7 to get to 9, what are we doing? We're going up 2, right? Up 2. So here our common difference would be 2. D is 2 here. So that's what our common difference is, how much we change from one term to the next. Uh, times, and then this will always be in there, the quantity n minus 1. Okay, and that means, n minus 1 means your previous term. n is the term you're on, n minus 1 is the term in front of the term you're on, n plus 1 would be uh, the, the next term. So, for example, if we were on 5, we'd say, okay, 5, that's n, n n minus 1 would be 3, and n plus 1 would be 7. So it's just kind of how you maneuver through your sequence. Um, infinite or finite. Uh, infinite means that it goes on forever. So what does finite mean? Finite means that it stops. Okay. When the sequence goes on forever, it's called infinite sequence. Otherwise, it's called a finite sequence. That means that it stops. So those are, we need to, you're going to need to write this down and memorize this. Um, the first term plus uh, the quantity n minus 1 times d. So our first example, write the first five terms of the sequence here. So uh, our first five terms, I can just write it here. Right, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are our first, so that stands for our place values of those first five terms. So what am I going to do? If I want the first term, I'll say a of 1, or a sub 1. When, when it's written down here, we say sub. We could also write it in parentheses, and that's when we, and we call that a of 1. So I'll keep it, because this is in subset terms, they will keep, we'll say a sub 1. It means the same thing. Um, one of them's subset notation, the other one's function notation. We kind of use them interchangeably um, as we go. So, so a sub 1 means negative 4, and we're going to substitute in a 1. So negative 4 times 1 makes negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 makes negative 1. So this means a sub 1, the first term, is negative 1. Now, we can know with what we learned from earlier and see this negative 4 in front of our variable here and know, oh, well, then our next term should go down 4 to get to our next term. So our next term should be negative 5. But let's check. We want to know a sub 2 here, so we're going to substitute in a 2. Okay, so we sub in our 2. What's negative 4 times 2? That's negative 8. Negative 8 plus 3 makes negative 5. There we go. We did it. So once we can recognize that there's a pattern, and there'll be a pattern anytime it's linear, so any time that this is to the first power, that will work. You'll have a common difference. So negative 5 minus 4, our next one should be negative 9. We'll do this one, last one. And so what term is this? This is our third term that we're checking on, right? So we're 
a sub 3, so we substitute in a 3. Negative 4 times 3 makes negative 12. Negative 12 plus 3 makes negative 9, so we're right. So we can continue on these next ones by just showing. All right, we're just subtracting 4 each time, so that's, oops, negative 13. And minus 4 would be negative 17. Writing the first 5 sequence. Now, you guys try this one. So you're trying this. So hit um, hit pause. Try and do it, and then uh, and then continue on. I'll keep going. Um, so um, one, two, three, four, five. First five terms. All right. So this is going to be. Uh, this is n, and this is a sub n. That's what that would be called. So a sub 1 is 5 times 1 minus 3, which would be 5 minus 3, which is 2. I can see already that the number in front of my, in front of my variable is a 5, so we should be going up by 5. 2 plus 5 makes 7. Let's check it out. A sub 2 would be 5 times 2 minus 3. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. Look at that. We got a 7. So uh, I'll do one more, but as long as you write little 5s and say, okay, that's our common difference. All right, common difference. So this next one should be 12, and we can do one more. So a sub 3 would be 5 times 3 minus 3. 5 times 3 is 15 minus 3 is 12. So that's right. So then to continue on, our next one would be 17 and our last one would be 22. Our next example, uh, writing rules for the sequence. So we need um, Well, now we we don't know whether or not this is uh, whether or not we're gonna have we're gonna get to use this equation or not, right? Which was uh, a sub a sub n equals the first term plus d times the quantity n minus one, right? Uh, so we we don't know if this is linear or not. This works with linear with linear uh, sequences. But we don't know if this is linear or not. If it is linear, there will always be a common difference. But let's uh, let's just kind of write this down. So uh, our first term, our second term, our third term, our fourth term, that's what they've given us so far. And we want to mimic a rule for our nth term. So um, our first term is 1. Second term is four thirds. Third term is six fourths. Fourth term is eight fifths. Ooh, I see a pattern. Okay, so now when we make this, this is this was a one first. Uh, when we make this, um, we want to be able to relate our n, right? We want to be able to to substitute in so like I want to be able to put in a 4 into my somewhere into my equation that I make and be able to get out 8 fifths out of it and I want to be able to put in a 3 into whatever equation I make and get out 6 fourths so how can I relate my input these are our inputs to where I get out the output that I'm to, that I need so let's look and see what's going on. Our first one is 1. Our second one, how does a 2 relate to a 4 and a 2 relate to a 3? How does a 3 relate to a 6 and a 3 relate to a 4? How does a 4 relate to an 8 and a 4 relate to a 5? And I've seen the pattern. I see the pattern. I'm going to change this 1 instead of being a 1 
maybe some of you guys already know what I'm going to change this to. Look at this pattern here. 5, 4, 3. What should this be if we keep with that pattern? That should be a 2, right? Let's look at this pattern. 8, 6, 4. What should this be? A 2. Isn't 2 over 2? Isn't it the same as 1? Alright, so now we might be able to come up with this uh, with this pattern. Let's look. So a sub n equals. Uh, now th we're making fractions, so I know I'm going to make a fraction here. So now how would I how would I input a one, but get out a two on top? And then how would I input a two and get out a four? How would I input a three and get out a six? Input a four and get out an eight. Do we see what we should do? One to two, two to four, three to six, four to eight. Looks like we're multiplying by two. So I'm going to say that this is. 2 times n, right? Uh, this is our inputs and our outputs. It's also our n's and our a of n's or our a sub n's. I should say, I should keep this consistent, a sub n. So 2n on top, right? If I wanted the first one, 1 times 2 makes 2. 2 times 2 makes 4. And now how do I get to the 3? Well, 1 to get to 2, 2 to get to 3, 3 to get to 4, 4 to get to 5. That's pretty, looks pretty easy. What are we doing? We're adding 1 to it. So this is going to be over n plus 1. So that was kind of a difficult one. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys will get easier ones, but uh, we can still do it. And it's just how we relate uh, our n, the number that we're on, with the number, with our uh, with our number in our sequence, our element. So you guys try this one. So right, I'll rewrite it. We've got, right, this is our n. This is our a sub n. These are also known as our inputs and our outputs. So we're going to input a 1, 2, 3, Four, right, and that was three, six, nine, and twelve. So now uh, a sub n equals. How do I relate a one and get a three, and a two and get a six, and a three and get a nine, and a four and get a twelve? What are we doing? One to get to three, we're adding two. Well, two plus two makes six, so that we're not adding. 1 times 3 makes 3, 2 times 3 makes 6, 3 times 3 makes 9, 4 times 3 makes 12. So we're multiplying by 3, so that's just 3n. That's all that is. If we want to know the fifth term, right, look at this. We're adding by 3 each time, aren't we? So what should that fifth term be? It should be 15, right? If we plug in a 5, into this, the fifth term would be 3 times 5, which is 15. Look at that. Uh, our third example. Uh, so we're given this sequence. We want to know the domain and the range, and we want to be able to graph it. So uh, these numbers that they give us for our sequence, these are on a graph they would be y values. So imagine we've got our y-axis there and our x-axis. So our x-axis and our y-axis. So these points, right, this this could be our inputs, and our outputs, our x's and our y's, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, so we want to go all the way to 243 after we go out 6, so that means we're going to need to jump around some, right? So uh, so our first one would be 1, 1. So let's say 1, 1 is like right there. Our next one would be 2, 3. And to get to 243, each one of these is going to be need to be worth like 20, right? You know, if it were just worth 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 
90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 60, 70, 80, 90, 200. That's good enough. So 1, 3 right there. 3, 2, Sorry, one, one right there. Two, three, jeez. Two, three right there, barely above it. Can't even tell the difference. Three, nine, it's gonna be just under the 10. Four, 27. Five, 27. Right there. Five, 64. Right around there. And six, 243, so, you know, up there. So what's the domain? The domain is all the input numbers, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And what's the range? That's the output number, so that's 1, 3, 9, 27, 64, and 243. Uh, a little side problem. Could you guys figure out uh, this equation that maps this? How do I relate 1 to 1, 2 to 3? 3 to 9, 4 to 27, 5 to 64, 6 to 6. Hmm. A sub n, this is going to be a, a, a harder one than I thought. Um, and, but we can figure it out. Uh, actually, this is kind of difficult. You have to have seen this pattern before. Um, we're going to say that it is 3 to the and minus one pattern or power because if I plugged in a one this would be three to the one minus one which would be three to the zero what is three to the zero that's one look at that we got out of one if we plugged in a two it would be three to the two minus one which would be three to the first which is three look at that if we plug in a three it would be three to the three minus one which would be 3 squared, which is 9. Look at that. So there's our equation. Now, you guys aren't going to be able to do that just today, but eventually that's where you'll get to, is where you can kind of, you can just see this, you know. These are cubes, right? Or, uh, or sorry, just threes. Uh, three, uh, 3 squared, 3 cubed, 3 to the 4th, 3 to the 5th. Okay. Okay, uh, our homework today is lesson 21.